I'm going to show you how to make an e-commerce website step by step using the storefront WordPress theme. In the time it takes you to watch this two hour tutorial you'll be an expert and there is nothing technical involved. I know people who have paid up to about $10,000 for this kind of thing but you will be able to create it all by yourself by following this tutorial. You'll be able to do everything from setting up your e-commerce website design, adding your products and importantly accepting payments. I'm doing this because I've had plenty of requests to demonstrate how to make an e-commerce website using an e-commerce store management system called WooCommerce and a design called Storefront and you may have heard of these before. The great thing about this is that you do not need to know anything technical to set all of this up. This tutorial has been created with the beginner in mind. So here is a quick demo of what I will set up during this tutorial. As you can see, it looks modern and professional. You'd normally pay up to about 10 grand for a web developer to produce this. I'll show you everything from creating this image slider you see here, adding product categories, sell products to your homepage. By the way, all of this is flexible. You can choose what you want to show or not show. Here is what a product page will look like. I'll teach you how to add product variations. For example, your customers can choose color, size, etc, etc. You can put in your product information. The customer will eventually add your products to cart. They'll view their shopping cart. Here's what the shopping cart page looks like. They'll be able to choose their shipping. You will be able to configure the shipping methods available to your customers. They'll proceed to the checkout. This is where they can sign in if they are an existing customer or they can sign up for a new account on your e-commerce store. They will then check out via credit card or PayPal. Both you and your customers will receive confirmation emails. To do all of this, I'll be using WordPress to manage content. Here are some notable WordPress users. You've got people like CNN, New York Times, eBay, Sony, um, Samsung. Now all of these companies use WordPress to manage some part of their business. And the reason is it's a free platform and it's extremely easy to use. So if you have any questions during this tutorial, please do ask in the comments below. And don't forget, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for updates. Let's begin. Here is our to-do list. The first thing, we'll get our .com domain and hosting. It takes about 10 minutes. Then we'll install the website store design, about 5 minutes. And then I will take you through step by step the full e-commerce setup that you will need to add products, accept payments and do everything else that other e-commerce sites can do and more. So to give you a little bit more information, we will be getting a domain. Um, you can select your own and you will have full ownership over that domain. And web hosting, a server where all of the website files are stored. So everything from the text, the images, to every other file that makes up your website. And you need a web hosting service for that. These are the only two essentials that cost money. And I'll show you where you can easily acquire them in about 10 minutes. And then once we get you online, number three and four, we will start setting up your store. So I will show you how to install the store design and I will show you how to step-by-step uh, -step go through the full e-com setup. And look, both of these can cost between six to $10,000 initially for the store design and then ongoing payments for e-commerce management. But you won't need to do that because I will be teaching you how to use WordPress and the WooCommerce platform to manage everything yourself. Feel free to go out and get quotes from web developers and you'll be astonished at how much this stuff costs. But I will be showing you how to get this professional setup for literally nothing. So the first thing, let's get you online. Let's set the base, build the foundation before we can start setting up your store. And the best place to do that is hostgator.com. For acquiring your domain and hosting, I'd like to introduce to you a company called Hostgator. I've been using Hostgator for nearly 10 years myself for all of my e-commerce stores and other websites. Um, you'll see that 
they've won plenty of awards. If you scroll down, you'll see all their awards. You'll see that they have excellent phone support and a money-back guarantee and excellent availability. I've been using them for about 10 years. If you want to use another web host of your choosing, you're absolutely welcome to do so. Just keep in mind that the rest of the steps in this tutorial may not work exactly like I demonstrate them to you because I'll be demonstrating this tutorial using my HostGator account. So if you want to follow along with me exactly in the same steps, I do recommend HostGator. So first thing you'll notice is that there are two different types of hosting, web hosting and WordPress hosting. Now although we are building a WordPress site, it does not mean that you need WordPress hosting. All you need is basic web hosting. Now WordPress hosting is more expensive and you can read about that in your own time if you want to. But personally, I just use the ordinary web hosting and I set up my WordPress sites using normal web hosting. So click on that. Also, the normal web hosting is a lot cheaper than the WordPress hosting. And to be honest, it's more than enough to run your e-commerce website. So go down and you'll see three different plans. Um, the business plan has stuff you don't need, so ignore that. The baby plan is very similar to the hatchling in the way that um, all the features are very similar except the baby plan allows you to host more than one domain, whereas the hatchling plan only allows you to host one single domain. That means one single e-commerce website. Now I assume this is the first e-commerce website for most of you, so I would recommend the hatchling plan, which is also the cheapest. Down the track, if you do have other websites, you can always upgrade to the baby plan, so that's not a problem. So just click on the sign up button. Next, you'll need to either register a new domain if you haven't already got one, or click this tab here if you already own a domain elsewhere, and then enter it in this field here. Now, for most of you, you'll need to register a new domain. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll register a domain called um, My Ecom Store. Now, a .com is my personal preference. You can choose a .net, org, .info. It does not make any difference when it comes to setting up your WordPress website. It's just a personal preference of mine to select .com. So I'll be doing that. Now just make sure you've selected the domain that you want to register. You can choose a billing cycle you will notice that the longer you subscribe for upfront, the cheaper it will be. Now it says 20% off here, but I'll show you in a second how to get a much bigger discount than this 20% off. So I generally subscribe for 12 months or two years at a time. So let's select 24 months, it's completely up to you. Enter a username and a security pin. Now, let's just skip over the billing info for a second. Go to Additional Services. I want you to uncheck or deselect anything in this area here because, to be honest, it's not absolutely necessary and I don't use any of these myself. So if any of these are enabled, they are extra expenses, but you don't need them. So feel free to deselect them. Now, going down, the coupon code. Like I said, I can get you a better discount than the ordinary 20% off. Have a look at your amount due. Then enter this coupon code instead. Online store. Don't forget to click validate. And you'll notice that the discount is a bigger discount and the amount due is lower now. This coupon will always give you a bigger discount than the standard HostGator coupon. So please do take advantage of that. Next, go back up and fill in your personal billing details. Of course, I will be blurring my screen here because I don't want to disclose any of my personal billing details. And you've got two options to pay, credit card or PayPal.
When you've done that, scroll down. Just double check that all of your details are correct. And then click on this I have read and agree to the terms and conditions checkbox. Then when you're ready, click check out and you will have secured your domain and hosting. And that is the only expense that you will have throughout this tutorial to set up your e-commerce website. Just so you know, I may receive small referral credits from HostGator and this helps me bring these videos to you free of charge because it helps me cover my costs. So thanks in advance for supporting me. Click check out and I'll show you the next step to set up your e-commerce website. The next thing you will receive is a confirmation email from HostGator containing details of your order. It will have your domain which you now own. You're now the sole owner of this domain name and it will contain details such as your control panel link, username and password. And I'll show you what to do with that now. So locate your control panel link, click on that and in the next step enter in your username and password. So I'll just copy and paste into that section there. And then log in. This area here is known as your hosting control panel. So the next thing we need to do is install the WordPress platform the WordPress platform is what we will use to manage the content on our website. So go down and locate the link called Quick Install. Click on that. Then in the left hand side column, let's click on WordPress. Continue. Your domain should automatically populate in this box here. If it doesn't, then just select it from the drop down below. Leave this box empty. I'd like you to disable the auto upgrades. And in admin email, enter your own personal email address that you check regularly. Leave blog title empty for now. As admin user, for admin user, just enter admin. You can leave first and last name empty and then click install now and this will install the WordPress platform onto your server. And that's done. WordPress is now installed. There are some important pieces of information just over here. Firstly, this URL. You'll notice it will be your domain forward slash wp-admin and that is the URL you'll have to access to enter the administration area for managing your website. So anytime you want to manage your website go to that URL there. So open that in a new tab if you can. Just keep in mind that sometimes this does take around 15 to 20 minutes to activate after you install WordPress. So if this loads a blank page just come back in about 15 or 20 minutes and try again. Eventually, this is the screen you will see. It is the WordPress administration login. And we can use the password and username provided here. This password is really long and this password is really long and we won't be able to remember that. So the first thing we'll do when we log in is change that password. Cool. So this is your WordPress admin dashboard. This is the back end where you will control your entire e-commerce website. So I will show you during the length of this tutorial how to use all the different things here to set up your online store. First thing though, let's change our login password. So if you hover over a area called users and just click on all users, then click on admin, 
That is the user we just set up when we installed WordPress. You can change any details that you want, but what we want to do now is enter a new password in this field. So enter your new password and then come down and click update profile. Cool. So if I just log out now, to summarize, I would like you to write down three important pieces of information. One, this URL, yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash admin. Your username, which is probably admin if you followed what I did and your new password. Write that down somewhere and keep it handy because anytime you want to make changes to your online store, you will have to come to this page and enter your username and password. Then you'll be able to log in and manage your website. It's pretty cool because your website is already up and running. Your domain works and it's fully functional. Now we will get on to installing our e-commerce design and also the e-commerce platform that we'll be using to manage all of our products, pricing and all the fun stuff. Now let's install the awesome e-commerce store design that I demonstrated to you at the beginning of the video. So I want you to open up a new browser and go to a website called woothemes.com. Just sign up for a free account with WooThemes. I've already got one, so I will log in. After you've done that, go to Themes and just select all themes. Then go down and select free. We will be installing a spectacular e-commerce theme, otherwise known as a design, which does not cost you anything. So if you go down, you'll see a design called storefront. So click on that one. That's the one we are going to be using. You can view a demo if you want and read some more information about this particular design how many times it's been downloaded so far and some of its features etc etc then I want you to download storefront and save it onto your computer somewhere where you can easily access ideally the desktop then click save once that's done downloading just you can close that window now, we don't need this anymore. We've downloaded the theme file to our computer. Now back in your WordPress administration dashboard, hover over the appearance tab and then click on the themes link. We want to be adding a new theme to our site, so click on this add new link. and then click the browse button it should open up your uh, computer browser so then go to wherever you saved that file and look for the storefront theme it's a zip file and click the open button and then click install now this could take a few minutes so be patient cool uh, once that's done, all you need to do is click on the activate link and it will activate this design for your website. So let's have a look at what the site looks like now. Cool, so we're one step closer. We will be setting this up a little bit later. For now, that's all you need to do to install your new design. If you want to read about this particular design, just click on the Get Started with Storefront link and it will take you through to this page where it will give you some information. It tells you that the best way to use Storefront is to install WooCommerce and that is actually what we are going to be doing in the next step. 
WooCommerce will be your e-commerce platform. I'll tell you a bit about that later. And then other items such as configuring menus, so creating a color scheme, adding logos, etc, etc. So you can read a bit about that if you like. But for now, that's all we need to do. Now the next thing we need to do is install what is known as WooCommerce. WooCommerce is going to be our e-commerce platform. So we will need this to control everything from adding products, setting prices, managing shipping, creating coupons, and everything else that an e-commerce website needs to function. And the way we will do this is install a plugin. So just find plugins in your left hand side navigation and click on the add new link. Essentially what a plugin is, it's an add-on for your WordPress website. It's like an extension of the basic site. So now we will be adding a plugin called WooCommerce. And it's this one we want here. WooCommerce Excelling in E-commerce by WooThemes. And as it says here, WooCommerce is a powerful, extendable e-commerce plugin that helps you sell anything. We want to install that. And then click the Activate Plugin link. And there we go, WooCommerce is installed. Stay on this page here. If you hover over products, you'll now see that there are additional options available to you to set up your store. So you can add products, etc, etc. You can um, manage all these items here. But anyway, that's what the WooCommerce plugin has done. It's now enabled our website to have e-commerce functionality. And I will get into that a little bit later. For now, if you just op if I just open all my pages in a different screen, you'll see that there's only one page there called a sample page, which is a default. Here WooCommerce asks you to install WooCommerce pages. So I'd like you to click that button there. And if I just refresh this, you'll see what that has done. You see it's added a page for our cart, for our checkout, for accounts and the shop page and that's all been done automatically. So this is really really good, we're making really good progress. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to get in touch with me via the comments and I'll be more than happy to help you. So for now that's all, we've installed WordPress and we've installed our e-commerce platform to manage our store. The next thing we will need to do is adjust some basic settings on our website. Just basic general settings. So some housekeeping. Follow along with what I do here. If you go to settings and click on general. Delete the site title and enter your store name. Delete the tagline and go down and click on the save button. Now you'll notice that if you go to your website, the www does not show in front of it. So the way you can make that appear is just go to this field here and after the two slashes, just enter www dot and the same thing in the following field this isn't essential it's just a personal preference of mine and that step will actually prompt you to log back into your WordPress dashboard there you go Okay, the third thing we need to do is if you go to posts and click on all posts, you will notice that WordPress installs a default post called Hello World. We want to 
delete that, so click the trash button. Then click on the trash link and you can delete that permanently. And the same thing happens when you go to pages. You'll notice you have all of your pages that WooCommerce set up, plus one called sample page. And that's the one we want to delete. Cool. Now we need to go into the plugins area and click on installed plugins. There are a few here that are installed by default and we do not need, so I recommend deactivating and deleting them. Those ones are Jetpack, so if that's activated on yours, just click the checkbox, the Mojo Marketplace, and the WP Cache. So then go to this drop down and click on Deactivate and Apply. Then once it's deactivated, tick them again and this time we want to delete all of them. And yes. Cool. Now go and hover over WooCommerce and click on the settings link. In the general tab, there is an option to select your base location. So select whatever your base location is. You have an option here to determine which countries you want to sell to. So you can select to sell to all countries, or you can select to sell to just specific countries. And if you choose that option, you'll have the choice of selecting from a drop down which countries you want to be able to sell to. For the purposes of this demo, I will keep it to sell to all countries. Then go down, keep these items as default, and select your base currency. And currency position, if that changes, obviously this will stay to the left, because it's in US dollars, uh, and I'll leave the rest as default. Then click Save Changes when you're done. Next, go to the Emails tab. The From name, change that to your business name or your e-commerce site name. And change the From email address to your business email address if you need to. And these are the details that will be used when a email is sent to your customers after they completed an order and therefore it is a good idea to have them updated. And also the email footer text, I'll change that to the business name as well. You can change it to yours, to whatever you like. And for now I will leave the rest of the details the same. You can definitely customize these if you want. You can upload a header image for your email, you can change the base color, background color, text color, etc, etc. So you can do that in your own time if you like. For now I will save those two changes. And that's it. That is all we need to do for some basic groundwork before we start setting up our products. Now if you visit your ecom store and go to one of the pages, you'll notice that there is this sidebar here that looks pretty messy. So I will show you how you can edit that very, very quickly before we start getting into things. So if you go back into your dashboard and hover over Appearance, go to Widgets. This area here corresponds to your sidebar. So we've got Recent Comments, Archives, Categories, Meta, Posts, Comments, Archives, Categories, Meta. So all you need to do is click on that drop down and hit Delete. And then if I refresh, 
you'll notice that sidebar is gone, that's all been deleted. And one really cool thing you can actually add there in its place is something called the WooCommerce cart. So if I drag and drop that into the sidebar, I can name that your cart. You can hide if the cart is empty. And it's really, really cool. It's something I like to do on my e-commerce stores. There it is there. So when we have our product set up, when I add a couple of products to my shopping cart, you will see them appear in the sidebar here and I can check out directly. It's actually really, really cool. It's really user friendly. It's a streamlined process from adding products to going to the checkout. So it can potentially increase your conversion rates. That's why I like to keep this in here. And you will see how that functions a little bit later. The next thing I'm going to show you is a very important step and that is adding products to your e-commerce website. So let's go and hover over the products tab and click add products. The first product type I'm going to show you how to set up will be a simple product. So it will not have different variables such as size or color etc etc. It will just be a simple product. Then I will show you how to set up a variable product where a single product can come in a number of different options. So like I said it could be sizes, colors etc etc. Essentially they will be different variables. But for now let's set up a simple product. For the first one, I will use an example of a outdoor table set. In this area here, you can put a long description of your product. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste some text I have in another screen as an example. So this is where your main product description will go. And in this visual editor, you can use all of these different features click on this toolbar for more and you'll get even more features so perhaps I'll put in some bullet points and a subheading as an example Then if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see there is an area for a short description. So there, just keep it short and simple. And you'll see where that all goes later when I save this product. The next thing to do is attach this product to a new category. So say this falls under our tables category. And add new product category. It is now assigned to a category called tables. Now into this product data area, you can enter a SKU if you have one. If you're a smaller business, you probably don't have one. But if you have a bigger business, you might have a SKU for each product. So that's optional. Here you can enter a price and you can enter a sale price, which if you do that, it comes up with a nice sale icon and shows you the discounted price. But I'll show you that in a second. First, I'll just set up a full price product. In the inventory tab, you can enable stock management if you like and define how many products you have in stock. And that is all for now. I will show you these other settings later for other items, but for now, that's all we need in here. Now, in the featured image section, your featured image for this product will be the main image that is displayed. So when you click on that, it will allow you to upload files from your computer. Once you do that, they will appear in what is known as your media library. So let's select the image. Depending on the size of your images, it might take a couple of minutes to upload. When that's done, click on the set featured image link there. And then you can add more images in your product gallery so that users can scroll through additional images for this product. So once again, if you've 
got those images already uploaded, it will appear in your media library. Otherwise, just upload files from your computer. You can even drag and drop like that if you want. Or you can just select them all and click open. Then click add to gallery. Okay, that's all we need to do for now. Let's click publish and see what that looks like. There you go, you've set up your first product. It's laid out very, very nicely, very clearly. It's got your breadcrumbs over here, so it's easy for users to navigate. When you click on your main featured image, it will come out in a nice pop-up window and users will be able to scroll through all the other images you uploaded for that product as well. They can select quantity. This is where the short description goes and here is our long description. When a user adds to cart, they will then see their shopping cart in the right hand side column which is what we set up earlier. So as you can see it's a really really good user experience. Now let me just change this to a sale price and you'll see how that changes. So if I just refresh this page and then come down in here let's give it a sale price and then update. So now when I refresh this, you'll see that it gives it a nice sale icon and shows the original and the discounted price. I think that's pretty good. It looks really, really nice. So that's how easy it is to set up simple products. Next, let's set up a product where there are different variables. So I'm going to use this as an example. I'm going to set up a product for cushions, but they come in in four different colors. So I'll just enter my product name. I will assign it to a new category. I'll put in my long description. Okay, so here is where the key difference is for a variable product. Just select variable product from the drop down. Now you can give it a skew if you want. You can assign inventory if you want. Then I want you to go down to attributes. We want to add a new attribute. And the name of this attribute for us will be color because I have four different colors and then ensure that the visible on the product page checkbox is ticked and so is used for variations. Now in this area we need to enter the different variations separated by this pipe symbol and I'll show you what I mean so we have black space pipe space orange There we go. That pipe symbol, actually for me, it's on my keyboard under the backspace. So if I hit shift and hit that key, I will get that pipe symbol. It's just a vertical line. Once you do that, click on save attributes. Now go to the variations tab. We want to link all variations. Now in this example, we only have four different variations. So what this will do is create four separate variations. There we go, four variations added. Now here is the interesting part. You can assign a skew for each variation. You can enter a different price 
for each different variation. So say black is 55 in stock. Um, you can upload an image. Set variation image. And now here's a really cool part. For the next variation, you can actually upload a different image. And when a user clicks on that particular option, the image that they see will automatically change. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, now let's say as an example, let's leave black and orange at 55, but let's give red a sell price and teal as well, just to, just to see it as an example. And like I said, you can manage stock for each different variation as well. If you just click on that checkbox, you'll see that you can adjust the stock quantity. Okay, now the next thing you need to do is set a featured image. So because we already have these uploaded to my media library, we can select one of them as a featured image. And then we can enter more images. Just hold down control and select as many images as you want and click add to gallery and they can be your other product gallery images. Once you do that, click publish. And let's take a look. So here are our scatter cushions. The price ranges from 45 to 55. And you can see we have an area here for selecting our option. So if I choose black, guess what happens? That image changes to black because that's the image that we uploaded for black here. Similarly, if I choose teal, it changes to that corresponding color. There you go. It's really, really cool, isn't it? And really easy to set up. And there we go. In additional information, we have a little bit of a description. It comes in four different colors. And for your peace of mind, it also has the stock quantity over here. So if anything is out of stock, it will not allow the user to add that particular variation to their shopping cart. And depending on which variation you choose, the price also changes because we made black and orange 55 and red until 45. So that's a really easy way to set up products that have different variations to them. Now I'm going to show you one more product that have variables to them, but this time they'll have two variables. They'll have color. So take these cubes for example. They come in black and they come in white and also size. They come in six cubes and they come in nine cubes. So let's use that to set up our different variations, color and size. So I'll just add product. Just quickly enter some dummy text in there. 
Okay. Let's assign a new category for this called storage. And now in this area, of course, we will select a variable product. And in attributes, let's add a new attribute. First one will be color. Check used for variations. And it simply comes in two colors, white or black. Let's save and add one more. This one will be size. Um, okay, so the different values here will be a 6 cube and a 9 cube. Okay, I'll save that. Just ensure both checkboxes are ticked. And now in the variations section, let's click link all variations. Now we should have a total of four because we'll have a white in a six cube and nine cube and a black in a six and a nine cube. So that equals four variations. So yep, all four have been added. And you can see them here. There we go, there's the white six black 6, white 9, and black 9. Perfect. So what we can do now is same as before. Let's start adding the information for each particular variable. Let's say the white ones are $95 and the black ones Let's say that's 95 as well And let's say the 9 cube ones are 145. Okay. I will come to all these other settings a little bit later, so don't worry about shipping class. We'll come to that a little later. Cool, for now that's fine. Next, let's select a featured image. And then let's select some additional product images. Actually, I might upload some different images. I'll deselect that one and that one. Perfect. Okay, let's publish that. There we go. We have our storage cube set up. They range depending on what options the customer chooses. They can choose their color and they can choose their size. So depending on the variation they choose, the associated image will pop up, which is absolutely perfect. And they can obviously view the image gallery. Cool, that is sensational. So there you go. That is how to set up
products with different variations. And one thing you notice actually, I'll show you one more trick I'll use. If I refresh that page, you'll see that there's no color or size selected by default. If you just go back in here, click on the Variations tab, and in this Defaults area, choose what you want to display as a default. So let's say by default when a customer lands, it will show white 6 cube. Now when I refresh that, there you go, automatically white 6 cubed is automatically selected. So there you go, please do ask me any questions in the comments below if you have any trouble setting this up and I will be more than happy to help. Now it's time to show you something equally as important and that is accepting payments through your online shop. I highly recommend you use PayPal. I'm sure you've seen PayPal just about everywhere from Amazon to eBay and all the big big stores use PayPal. They all accept PayPal as a payment gateway. So for you to do the same, for you to accept PayPal as a payment gateway, all you need to do is sign up for a free account. I'll let you do that in your own time. Once you've signed up for PayPal, just go down to WooCommerce and go into the settings area. Then click on checkout. Okay, so firstly, Let's leave the coupons checkbox enabled. Um, I'll show you how to apply coupons a bit later in this tutorial. It's actually really cool. So leave that enabled. Leave guest checkout enabled. I highly recommend you do that. Basically guest checkout means that customers do not have to sign up for an account on your e-commerce website. They can come along, add products to cart and then check out and pay as a guest. They do not have to log in and create an account to do that. So at the end of the day, I think that increases conversion rates. So I highly recommend you leave guest checkout enabled. Then go down and at the bottom you will see that there are three payment methods enabled. Direct bank transfer, check payment and PayPal. We only want to accept PayPal. The PayPal Gateway is able to accept credit card payments from people who do not actually have a PayPal account. So that's another advantage. So anyway, what we want to do is deactivate the direct bank transfer and the check payment. So you can click on settings here or you can go to the tabs at the top. And we want to disable that. And the same for check, we want to disable that one as well. Now just go back into the checkout options and make sure that PayPal is the only payment method that is enabled. And then let's click on settings, let's set that up. Okay, let's leave all that stuff as it is. The important step here is your PayPal email address. So when you sign up for a PayPal account, you will be signing up using your own email address and that will become your PayPal email address. Mine is this one here. So enter your PayPal email address in this field here. That's a very, very important step. You will receive money in the PayPal account that is associated with this email. Leave everything else as default then save changes. And believe it or not, that's all we need to do. There's nothing else to do to be able to receive payments through PayPal. You are now set up to accept payments into your PayPal account and when that happens, you can then withdraw that money into your own personal bank account. It's very, very simple. Let me demonstrate this to you with a real live transaction. I'm actually going to put in a real order now and you'll see the money flow into my PayPal account. So I'm going to log out of WordPress. So let's pretend now that I am the customer. Let's say I want to buy a cushion. and maybe a storage cube as well. I'm 
Okay. So now I can view the cart. I can proceed. Don't worry about shipping, we'll go through that a little bit later. And I can now enter the details. the customer would put in their own email address and here they have the option of creating an account but of course we have enabled the guest checkout so the customer does not have to do that they can put in some order notes and they can also ship to a different address if it doesn't match their billing address okay so Essentially, your customer will see this, they'll see the summary of their order, and they will have this button here, proceed to PayPal. Okay, they will be taken to this page here. If they have a PayPal account, they will enter their, enter their PayPal details. Otherwise, they will pay using a credit card or a debit card. So as you can see, it's not essential that the customer has a PayPal account. They can use a credit card to complete their transaction. But since for the purposes of this demo, I do have a PayPal account that I can use as a customer. Let's say this Hotmail account is the customer's PayPal account. They would enter their email address and password and then log into their own PayPal account to complete the payment. And pay now. There you go. This is what the customer will receive after completing their payment. They'll receive their order confirmation details, a summary of what they have purchased, and just a confirmation of where they will receive their order. So this is everything a customer will see. Now let me log into my business email account and show you what you will receive. Give me one second here, I'm just loading it up on another screen. There you go. You will see that you receive a couple of different emails. One of them is the order email, which will be sent to you, containing the details of the order. So it's now your job to get those items and ship it out to the customer. And also an email here from PayPal, just notifying you that you have received a payment. Okay, so now let me log into my business account, the one for which I entered my PayPal details in my online store so that I could receive payments from customers. Here it is. If I just log in, there we go. There is the completed order, $140 received into my PayPal account minus any PayPal fees which are approximately 2 to 3 percent and the beauty of this is that you do not need to use another payment gateway all the payments happen via PayPal therefore it is very very secure and very fast to set up and very reliable so what you can do now is withdraw that money directly into your bank account if you have any other questions around PayPal it would be best to contact them directly but if you have any questions around setting up PayPal for your e-commerce store definitely just let me know and I'll be happy to help you out. But there you go, there is a live transaction. There's proof that what we just did allows a customer to purchase your products and the money to be directly deposited into your PayPal account. Okay, so I decided to add a few more products to fill out the store a little more.
But next, what I'll be showing you is how to adjust the sidebar area or how to customize this sidebar area, I should say, and add more items and also how to make some pages full width. So if you see this cart page here, there's a big blank space and I don't like that. I'm going to make this page full width so it goes all the way across. So first I'll start with that. So if I go to pages and then select the pages I want to make full width. So I definitely want to make this cart page full width. In the template dropdown, the default template means that it is a template with the sidebar. So instead of that, I'll select full width and then click update. There we go, that looks much, much nicer. And also, I will probably, yep, I'll make this checkout page full width as well. Right now it looks very squashed up and very narrow and there's a lot of wasted space. So I will go into the checkout page and the same as before, select the full width template. Perfect, that is much, much better. Okay, next I will add things to this sidebar. So for whatever pages the sidebar is showing, um, the sidebar can be customized. So if you go to Appearance and then go to Widgets, you'll see here I already have my WooCommerce cart and that is this here, whenever I add a product, so say for example, I add this to cart, my cart will display here. I can also add other things. So if you go down, you'll see there are some options here. Um, we can have a price filter, we can add a product category filter, so I'll add that for now, product categories. Um, what else? We can actually add reviews down the track if there are some reviews. And we can also add top rated products, various different things. So let me just save that for now. It actually saves automatically and refresh that. And there we go. There we can see our product categories. So it makes it much easier for users to come to your site and navigate. And the user can select a particular category and go to products that are assigned to that category. You may want to add things in the sidebar that are custom. To have that flexibility, I would like you to install a plugin called TinyMCE. So if you go to Plugins and click Add New, search for a plugin called TinyMCE. Just as one word. And this is the one you're looking for, Black Studio Tiny MCE Widget. Let's install that one. And activate. Okay, now if I go back into Appearance and Widgets, the same area we were in before. You'll notice there is a new item called Visual Editor. So if I drag and drop that in, you'll see that I get this um, visual text editor to enter anything I want. So I can bold, italic, I can bullet point things, I can add images, I can also enter some code in the text tab if I need to. Keep in mind the text tab is for adding code and the visual tab is for adding just normal text. Um, you can you can align left, right, anything you can do with Microsoft Word you can do in this editor over here. And so it makes it really, really handy for you if you want to add any anything custom into your sidebar. Say for example you wanted to add a Google Map. I will show you that later, but you can also add that via the text tab by copying and pasting the Google Map code in this section here. But I'll show you that a little bit later. 
But anyway, this Tiny MCE Visual Editor is a good tool if you want to add anything that is custom. And as soon as you save that, that will appear in the sidebar. So go ahead and customize the sidebar in any way you want. Definitely use some trial and error, muck around, and see what suits your e-commerce store the best. And I'll show you how to set up a beautiful looking drop-down menu. So what you need to do is back into your WordPress admin dashboard, hover over Appearance and click on Menus. Okay, in here, just enter a menu name. So let's say Top Navigation and let's create menu. Then any pages that are already set up, we can check and then click the Add to Menu button and they'll be added. Also, assign, the, assign this as the primary menu and then click Save Menu. Okay, I'll go step by step so you know exactly what we're doing. So when I refresh that, now our page, My Account Checkout Cart Shop, corresponds to this menu. We're missing one thing, we're missing Home. So if you go to Links, you can enter any, any URL you want. So here I will copy and paste the home page and just call it home. Now if you want to rearrange the menu, all you need to do is drag and drop like that and then save and the menu will be rearranged accordingly. So as you can see it's really really easy to do. Now for the cool part I'm going to show you how to set up a drop down menu. I'll give you a quick example here before I do it properly. So say I drag and drop things so that they are indented like that. You'll see it creates a drop down menu with two tiers because I have set things up. Because for this design when you use this um, setting over here anything you drag and indent under another item is considered a sub item and will appear as a drop down. So let me just put that back to normal. And what I'm actually going to do is recommend to you the best way to set up your menu. And that is, we have a number of product categories here. So we're not really doing much with that right now. What we should be doing is having a menu item called products and then when the user hovers over the products menu item all the product categories will appear and therefore customers will be able to navigate and go to any category they want. So let me show you now how to set that up. If you go to hover over products click on the categories link I'll actually open that in a new tab Okay, you see there will be categories that you have created initially. And as you go along, you'll have more and more categories and you can keep adding them to your menu. So the way you can do that is if you go to, say for example, one of your categories and click View, I will open that in a new tab as well. All I need from here is this URL. I will copy this URL. So this particular URL corresponds to the one for accessories. Okay. So now if I go back into this menu setting, go to this links, let's copy, let's paste that URL in this field here and let's call it accessories. Add to menu. Okay, let's do that for all of our categories.
there you go. We've added all the custom links to all of the categories on our e-commerce site. So if I save that and then refresh my site, you'll see they are all added to the menu, but not yet as a drop-down. So now all you need to do is create a new one called at any URL you want in here for now and call it products. That will add it to the menu. So now drag and drop that somewhere. Click on the drop down and delete the URL. Okay. So now that should save an item called products but will not link off anywhere. There you go. Now, get all the items that you want to include as a sub-item under product, so all of your different categories, and simply indent them like I'm doing here. That is absolutely perfect. You'll see now that all the categories appear under the drop-down products, so it's really easy for your customers to navigate. And if you want to rearrange the order in which these appear, once again, it's as easy as dragging and dropping. And after you save, it will immediately take effect. Perfect. So it's easy as that to set up a custom drop-down menu to improve the user experience on your online store so that customers can navigate and easily find their way around your store and be able to locate products very easily. Let me know if you have any questions about that. All right, let's go ahead now and set up a Contact Us page. And we'll put that page in the menu as well. So if you want to set up any pages that haven't already been set up, all you need to do is go to Pages and click Add New. Give it a title. And here you can enter anything you want. Keep in mind that the Visual tab is best for entering text because you can do all kinds of things with this visual editor. You can edit the text using any of these tools here, like you would with a application like Microsoft Word. However, if you want to enter any code, you have to do that through the text tab. And I will show you how to do that, because on this page, let's enter some contact information, and let's also import a Google Map. So what I'll do for now, I'll just copy and paste some other data that I have in another screen. Okay. Um, maybe you can put an email address as well. that's what the page currently looks like and I want to remove the sidebar so what I'll do is make that a full width template cool okay so the next thing I will do is add a Google Map and so what you need to do to add a Google Map is just go to Google and enter your exact business address in here. Obviously I will use something as an example.
Okay, after you have entered your exact business address in this field here, click on this icon here and then it will give you the option to embed or share a map. Click on embed map and select a custom size. Now you can use a bit of trial and error to get the right size. So let's say for now 800 by 400. Just copy this entire code that Google gives you and go back into your content editor. Now if you paste that here in the visual tab, it won't work and I'll show you. See it just comes up as gibberish text. What you need to do is make your way to the text tab and enter your code in there like so. Now if you go into the visual tab you'll see there's a placeholder for the map and the code exists in the text tab. So click update And there you go, you've got your business location in a dynamic Google map. So if you have a storefront, or maybe you have a few storefronts, you can actually list them one by one and enter all their locations. And if you want to change the size of this map, so say we want it to be, to be a bit larger, or wider, I should say, um, we can go back here, and let's say give it 1200 by 450 or 500, enter this new code into this field here. And see that's way too wide. So just try, use a bit of trial and error until you get the right size. The correct size for this particular design, I believe, is 980 pixels wide. So if I go and put 980 in there, and then copy the updated code here. Yep, that's good, that's perfect. So it's as easy as that to enter some details into your Contact Us page. Now, the next thing we want to do is add Contact Us into our navigation. So all we need to do is copy that URL, go to Appearance and Menus, and in the links, let's input a custom link for Contact Us. And you can rearrange that if you want, but let's leave it at the end for now. And there you go. There is your Contact Us page appearing in the navigation. Any questions, let me know and I'll be happy to help. Now I'll show you how you can add an awesome looking image gallery to your store. To do that, let's set up a new page. I will add a new page called Image Gallery. This will be an independent image gallery, nothing to do with your products. Select the full width template. And then click the Add Media button. Click on Create Gallery and Upload Files. Here you can upload files that you want to make, make up your gallery with. So as an example, I've got some random images here. Obviously, you would have a gallery that has something to do with your store. I'm just going to use this as an example. So I will select these images and you'll see they upload one after the other. All right, that's great. Now click on the Create New Gallery button. Then select Link to Media File, then click on Insert Gallery. Okay, now when I click Update, you should be able to view that page. However, when I click on an image, you'll see it takes us off the page and onto this other page that shows us the image. 
and that doesn't look very nice. So what I'm going to do is install another plugin so that when I click on one of the images in this gallery, it comes up in a nice pop-up effect and a user or a customer can scroll through each one of the pictures in that gallery. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go to plugins and add new. And search for a plugin called Simple Lightbox. It's this one here. Install now. And don't forget to activate. That's all you need to do. So if I refresh this page and click on one of the images, you'll see now that it doesn't kick us off the site. It actually comes up. There you go. It pops up into a nice lightbox feature. And now I can scroll through every one of the images in that gallery. And the cool thing is you can create as many galleries as you want. You only need to install that plugin once. Once you install, you don't need to do anything else. So if you wanted to edit this particular gallery, just go back to that page. In the visual tab, if you just click here, you'll see a pencil icon and you will be able to remove or add more images to this gallery. And you can also reorder by just dragging and dropping. Very, very simple. And if you want to create a new gallery, simply just start up a new page and add media, create gallery, upload files and use the same process I told you earlier, except you will not have to install the plugin again. And you can install as many galleries as you want on your e-commerce site. So there you go, make use of that feature. It's a really, really cool tool to have. It gives a nice touch to your website. Now I'll show you how you can add social media sharing to your product pages. And take this site for example, Country Road. You'll see here there is a share area where people can share on social media this particular product. And it's something that big brands such as Country Road here would pay thousands of dollars to implement, but I'll show you how you can do that on your own e-commerce product pages in as little as five minutes. So if I go back into the dashboard of WordPress, uh, we want to install a new plugin. So go to plugins and add new. The plugin that you'll need to install for this, um, just search for something called WooCommerce Social Media Share. So just search for that and it should come up here. And it's this one here by Toasty Solutions. WooCommerce social media share buttons. That's the right one. So install that and then activate the plugin when the screen comes up. Yep. Now what you'll notice in the left hand side there'll be a share buttons area where you can click on and configure a few things. Now personal preference um, I like to leave Facebook, uh, Twitter, remove Google Plus, I like to leave Pinterest and remove everything else and leave email. So these are the four that I like to use for social media sharing on my e-com site product pages. Um, it's completely up to you which ones you want to use. You can also display them as just the button, a button with a counter or a box with a counter. So it's up to you how you want to display them. I personally like just the button. It's a little bit cleaner, less messy, but it's completely up to you. When you're done, save settings. And that is about it. So now if I just go to one of the products on my e-commerce website. Okay. And there you go. There is our social area. And anyone can come up and press, for example, the Facebook share button. They will be able to share this particular product on Facebook or tweet about it, pin it, or email somebody else. So that's an easy way to implement social media sharing onto your e-commerce store. Okay guys, now I'll show you how to add or insert your logo onto your e-commerce store, just in this area here. 
So going back into the WordPress dashboard, we'll actually have to install a new plugin again for this for this part too. Um, this plugin is called Storefront Site Logo. So if you just search for that plugin, you should be able to see this one here by Woo Assist, the Storefront Site Logo. Install that plugin and then activate as usual. Okay, now what you need to do is hover over appearance and click on the customize link. Now just for your information here in this section you can customize quite a few things on this site. For example, the um, the header area colors. So you can you can customize the background color of this area here, the color of these links here, etc. etc. Um, so if you click on header, actually no, if you go and click on branding, now this branding area has appeared as a result of installing that storefront site logo plugin. So this area should appear, the branding area, just click on logo image. Now go on to select image, upload files, now just upload the logo from your computer. Okay, my logo is just over here. So obviously you would need to have your logo ready before this. I'll show you a good place to get a logo made in just a second if you don't already have one. So obviously once your logo is uploaded, click on choose image. Then your logo will be set, then save and publish. Now if I just refresh this site. There we go. Our new logo is appearing on our store. Now if you don't already have a logo, I'll show you a good place to get a logo made. Try something called fiverr.com. It's a marketplace. It's a marketplace full of uh, offerings from different merchants and most of them cost about $5. So let's search logo creation. And you'll be able to find a number of providers offering to make you a logo, a custom made logo for $5. So go and browse through the various providers, maybe look at their ratings like you see over here. Um, and when you're happy with one, you can make an order and give them your details. I've used this site I've used providers on this site quite a few times to get different pieces of um, design work made, including logos. So sometimes it can be trial and error. You may not be happy with the first provider, but for $5, you really, really can't go wrong. So there you go. Let me know if you have any questions about that. Okay, now for the fun part. We're going to be setting up the homepage of our e-commerce website. As you can see right now, our home page is blank and has nothing on it. So I will set up the home page in a couple of different stages. So just follow along with what I do and everything will make sense. The first thing I'd like you to do back into your WordPress dashboard is go to pages and add new. Add a new page called home and click on publish. Okay, so now we have a new page called Home. Now go to uh, Settings and then the Reading tab. I need you to click this radio button here. We want the front page display to be a static page and in the front page drop down, go down and select the home page which we just created. So that's basically telling WordPress, yep, make this the home page and then click Save Changes. Okay, so now if I refresh the site, you'll see that there should be a page called Home. There we go. Okay, that's the first step done. Now what we need to do is install a plugin that lets us control what we want displayed on the home page. So back into your WordPress dashboard, go to Appearance, I mean go to Plugins, Add New, we want to add a new plugin. The plugin you need to install is called Homepage Control. So just search for that, Homepage Control. 
and this one here by WooThemes, install that plugin. And then activate. Okay, now back into the pages. We need to go back to the page we just created for home. Click on that. And we want to select under template, we want to make that a full, sorry, a home page template. So make this page the home page template and click on update. Now this selection is available as a result of installing the home page control plugin we just installed. Now that that's done, go to appearance, then customize. As a result of installing that plugin, we now have an area called, uh, here we go, home page control. Now, WordPress or this plugin allows you to select what items you want displayed on the home page. So this is what the home page currently looks like. We've got product categories, and don't worry about the images not showing. I'll show you how to update that in a second. We've got recent products, we've got featured products, top rated products, and on sale. Now, what I like to do is remove this uh, home page content area so then this home and the line over here will disappear. So let's remove that. I like to leave product categories there because it's easy for users to actually navigate when they land on the home page. Um, so I'll leave that. I will also leave recent products. I will leave featured products. There's currently nothing under there, but I'll show you how to add featured products in a second. Um, I will remove top rated products, which is the popular products tab, and I'll keep on sale. Okay, so this is generally what the home page will look like. So let me save and publish for now and refresh the site. So there you go, it's starting to take form. Now these product categories are missing images and I'll show you how to easily update that. So now if I just close this, by the way you can come back here and add or, any, add or remove anything you want to, but for now I'll close that. Um, so if I go to products and click on categories, you'll see that every category has a thumbnail image next to it. So if I click on edit, for one of the categories. I can over here upload an image. You can either upload one from your computer or you can choose an existing image. So maybe I'll take this one here and update. Okay that should now appear. There we go. So you can start doing that for all of your other product categories if you want to show that section. Um, what else? Okay, featured products. Nothing. There are no featured products showing on the site at the moment. To show featured products, what you need to do is go into the products section. Now this star over here, these stars, they are for featured products. So if you select, so if you enable any of these, they will be considered featured products. So now let's go ahead and choose a few of them. Uh, let's say this floating shelf over here, that can be featured. Um, this chair over here. Perhaps the storage cubes. And we'll need one more, so... Let's grab this laminated coffee table. Okay, now let's see what our e-commerce website homepage looks like now. There we go, we've got our featured products slotted into place. Good stuff. Okay, so feel free to play around with that. Feel free to add or remove any areas you like. And let me know if you have any questions about that so far in the comments below. One thing I forgot to add is that if you want to reorder any of these, so say for example you want the on sale to appear at the top and you want uh, product categories to appear under recent products, what you can do is you can actually drag and drop these tabs here. So if I drag and drop that up there 
and I can make that product categories appear under recent products for example or maybe I want featured products to be at the top as well so you can completely customize the order in which these areas appear okay now that we've got the different segments of our home page set up I want to add a nice big image slider just after the menu area here a nice full width image slider and there will be a little bit of coding involved but don't worry because I'll show you exactly what you need to do um, so if you go back into WordPress go to appearance and editor click on this link here theme functions functions.php you'll see a bunch of code now click on the link in the description below that takes you through to my eMedia Coach website, the page on my website where I have information about this tutorial. Because I've put some code on that page and I've got it here. So what you need to do is copy and paste that code. Okay, so copy and then paste it just after all of the other code on that page in the theme functions.php. So there we go, we've pasted that in. Now, where the two X's are over here, media slider ID, we'll need to edit those in just a second. So for now, I'll just click update file. Okay. So now what we need to do is install a media slider. So I'm going to go into plugins. And I'm going to add a new plugin. Search for one called Media uh, Meta Slider. M E T A Slider. It's this one here. Install that, and then activate. Okay. Now you should see a Meta Slider area in the side column here. So click on that. And it will ask you to create your first image slideshow. So click on the plus icon. Let's give this slideshow a name. Now click on the add slide button. Here what you can do is you can add image slides from images that are already in your media library or you can upload new files from your computer. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll just add some files from my media library. Now, if you click on one image, hold down control on your keyboard. Of course, I'm using a Windows here. So click on an image, hold down control and click on another image. You can multi-select. So let's take those as an example. And when you're ready, click on Add to Slider. What this will do is it will add the images to your slider. And if you want to reorder the order in which the images appear, just drag and drop like I'm doing here. Okay. Now on the right hand side, change width to 1080. A height, I recommend anything between 400 and 450. Um... Okay, advanced settings. You can go through all these settings in your own time. They've got different um, settings such as the transitions, the slide delay, and all of that stuff. The main thing you may want to change straight away is the slide delay. And you can see here it's in milliseconds. Um, actually, it's in microseconds. So that is equal to three seconds. So if I just change that to 7,000, that will be seven seconds in between each slide. So each slide will appear for 7 seconds, then transition to the next. Now, you can have a look through the other settings if you want, but when you're ready, click Save. Now the next important thing is, if you go all the way down and you look under the shortcode area, you'll see this uh, tag over here. It's called a shortcode. Meta slider ID equals, and it gives you a number. So all you need to do is take that number, 117 in my case, so take that number, whatever you have in this area here, 117 for me. Now go back into Editor, so under Appearance, Editor. Now go back into Theme Functions. Now where these two X's are, delete those X's, 
and enter that number which is in your MetaSlider shortcode. Then click on Update File. Now if we've done everything correctly, when I refresh this browser, I should see the full width image slider appear. And there it is. That looks absolutely fantastic. And now you'll see after 7 seconds it will actually transition onto the next slide. There we go. So make sure the images that you use are high quality images. As you can see, this one's a little bit blurry because the original image was not high quality. So therefore the original image that you use makes a big difference. But as you can see, that looks absolutely amazing and I'm really, really happy with that. Our homepage looks extremely professional and enticing. Um, if you have any questions about the slider, please do let me know as well in the comments below. And one more thing, if you ever want to delete a slide, you can always go back into your media slider, hover over the item you want to delete, and there's a little delete icon in the top left. Just like that, you can delete a slide, or you can add new slides onto an existing slider. Now the third thing I'm going to do, and this is completely optional, um, I'm going to actually change the color scheme of the header area you see here. So as you can see right now it's a dark color scheme with um, white or light links. If you like that, that's absolutely fine. That's no issue. I actually like this as well. But what I'm going to actually show you is how to change the color scheme of this if you want to. So um, I'm going to change it to a lighter color scheme back into the dashboard if you go to appearance and customize you will see an area called header so if you click on that you'll see that you've got some options over here the background color the text color and the link color um, so you can choose to implement any color you like so if you click on this here you can absolutely choose any color you want to match your theme or your products or your branding and it will look absolutely fantastic. So just have a muck around with that if you like. Obviously if you're using your light background, use dark text, etc, etc. Okay, so in my case, maybe I'll choose a very light background. So, okay, I'll choose a white background and um, as a result, I will need to change my logo, which I'll do in a second. Uh, text color. Okay. And link color. I'll make it the same. When you're ready, save and publish. Obviously here I need to change my logo because my logo was a very light color. Luckily I've got a dark one ready to go. So this was before, and this is after, a much lighter color scheme. Now different people will have different preferences, so there's no right or wrong answer. It's completely dependent on you, what you like, and what suits your e-commerce website. Now I will demonstrate to you how you can set up the tax options on your e-commerce website. So just hover over WooCommerce and go to the settings area. Now click on the tax tab and this is the area we'll need to configure. Now before I start, just keep in mind that I can't tell you what you need to do but I can show you how you can do it because tax obviously depends on the country or the state in which you live in. So just do some research on your local rules and then come here to set up all of your tax options. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is check the checkbox up here, enable taxes and tax calculations. So that will enable this whole module here. 
Now in this area here, prices entered with tax, click yes if you want to enter final prices of your products that are inclusive of tax or check no if you want to enter prices for your products without tax and for those products tax will get added on automatically. I've noticed most e-com sites have prices inclusive of tax because they don't want to give clients or customers any surprises when they get to the uh, checkout. Now calculate tax based on it is standard convention to have tax based on the shipping address because um, because by doing that tax will only be calculated based on where that person lives and those tax rules will take effect. Now shipping tax class you can apply one of the following tax classes um, if unsure just leave shipping tax class based on cart items that is the smartest way of doing things. Here you can round tax at a subtotal level instead of per line and that results in a much cleaner checkout so I choose to enable that. In tax classes there are a couple of different types of tax classes there as default. You can choose to add any more tax classes if you like. Now display prices in the shop. I think it's good convention to display prices inclusive of tax because again like I said you don't want your customers to be surprised when they get to the checkout and they see that the uh, price has increased due to tax. You want all the prices to be inclusive. Now I've seen some e-com stores that do that have prices inclusive of tax and some that exclude tax so once again there's no right or wrong answer. It's just what you think will work best or maybe you can test each one of these two out and see what works best for your e-commerce store. Prices displayed during cart and checkout. I like to include tax during cart and checkout as well. Now the price display suffix. This will be the little note after the price. So for example, um, price inclusive of VAT. That's just an example. Or in Australia, it would be inclusive of GST, etc., etc. Okay, display tax totals. I like to keep them as a single total. Once again, it's a little bit cleaner in the shopping cart rather than having the tax itemized at a per line level. Um, then save changes when you're done. Next, go up to the standard rates tab. Now that we've defined our settings, now we need to insert the actual tax rates. So if you go here to insert row, you'll be able to enter a country country code to which tax applies. Uh, you can enter a state code. Now if you do not enter a code for state, it will consider the tax applied to all states of this particular country. So if you leave any of these blank, that, will, that tax rate will apply to every single area in this country. You can see here a two-digit state code, for example, uh, leave blank to apply to all. So say this tax only applies to California. Zip or postcode, once again, if you leave this blank, it will apply for all zip codes in California, or you can specify certain zip codes. Same for city. And tax rate, enter any tax rate you want to apply. Tax name, call it whatever you need to call it. So. I'll give you a real example here in the in here in Australia, we have we have um, a countrywide tax. So I'll leave everything else blank at ten percent called GST, which is the goods and services tax. Now priority. If you have other taxes that you're going to insert, you can set priority levels so WooCommerce knows which tax rate to apply. Compound, you can choose whether or not it's a compound rate. Compound tax rates are applied on top of all other taxes. Now again, this applies if you have added more rows or more taxes that apply. In my case, it doesn't apply. Now shipping, do you want to add tax on top of the shipping as well? Or do you want to tax the shipping? Um, no, I'm pretty sure that the GST is exclusive of shipping. I'll have to double check that though. When you're ready, click Save Changes. 
Okay, cool. And here you can see there's additional tabs for reduced rates, reduced tax rates, zero tax rates, and the additional tax class rates, which remember I entered another tax class that was called additional tax class. So all of those options are there if you need them. I think most of you would stay in this tab here and insert row and add taxes for any countries that you are selling in. If you have any questions about that, please do ask me in the comments below or do some research on applying taxes in WooCommerce. Do a Google search and you'll get a ton of information. Once again, I could only show you how to do things, but I can't tell you what to do because tax is different in every single country. But if you do have any questions, please let me know. Okay, now let's discuss upsells and cross-sells. I will show you how you can do this within WooCommerce itself. As an example, have a look at Amazon. If I go to this bed frame here, you'll see that Amazon has a section here, customers who bought this item also bought and they have related products. And this is an excellent example of cross-selling. For our example, I will take this bed frame over here and I will use the related products we have for the purposes of demonstrating how to upsell and cross-sell products within your e-commerce website. Okay, so to start with, what is upselling? For those of you who do not know, say for example, a customer has selected a bed frame and you present the customer with the option to purchase a full bed set. And that means that the full bed set will have a higher price, it has more products and the key is that it will make you a bigger profit. So when should you upsell? The key here is to only suggest upsells when they will make you more money. Okay, now let me show you how to set up upselling within WooCommerce. So say the base product is this queen bed frame. So if I just navigate to that product inside my WooCommerce dashboard, Here it is, the queen bed frame. So let's say when somebody adds this queen bed frame to cart, I want them to be presented with the option of buying this full bed set, which includes absolutely everything, a mattress, bedside tables, etc., etc. It costs 200, sorry, $2,500. Whereas if they purchase our bed frame alone, it only costs $550. Okay, so to set up your upsell, go to the product that you want to set up the upsell for, then go to linked products. Now in this upsells area, just start entering the details or the name of the product that you want to upsell. And then select the product from the list. So this is the one that I want to upsell to, the full bed set. And then I can click on the update button. Okay, now I'll show you how that works. Say somebody comes across this bed frame. Okay, cool. I'm interested. Let me read a little bit about it. Okay. And then they'll say then they'll see this section here. You may also like. And they may think, "Hang on. I may as well purchase this full bed set. Let me have a look at it." They can click on that, read up on some details, and if they're tempted, they will end up adding this to cart rather than just the bed frame. So say for example, they add that to cart, and there you go, you've effectively upsold them onto a bigger product that makes you more money. Okay, so that's how upselling works. Now cross-selling, the subtle difference here. Um, so same example, say a customer selects the bed frame. On the checkout, you offer the customer to also purchase a mattress and a headboard because they both go well with the bed frame that the customer has already added to cart. And like I showed you before, uh, Amazon has a great area called customers who bought this item also bought. Now when should you implement this? The key here is that you should offer to cross sell products that complement each other. Now that's very, very important. Why should you do that? Because you'll get people purchasing things they didn't originally come to the website for. Therefore you sell more products per visitor and that means you'll make more revenue. So let me show you how to cross sell products in WooCommerce. So if I take the same example, the queen bed frame, 
So anyone who lands on the queen bed frame page, I want them to be presented with an uh, with a cross sell. Okay, so same area as before. Link products, cross sells. Start entering the products which you want to offer the cross sell for. So that's one of them, the soft headboard, and there should be something in here for a mattress. There it is, and now I will update. Okay, now going back to my store, let's just go to the bedding area again. So say I'm a new visitor, I've landed on this page here, the queen bed frame, I'm considering purchasing this, and I've gone through all of this information, you may also like, actually, no, I don't want to purchase the full bed set, I do want to purchase this bed frame. So I'll add that to cart. Eventually they will view their shopping cart. Now when they land on this page, they will see presented options. You may also be interested in. Okay, so I've added this queen bed frame to cart. And now it's given me an offer to add a soft headboard and a queen mattress to cart. You know what, I do need a queen mattress to go with this bed. So maybe I'll take a look at that. Eventually the customer may end up adding one of your cross cells to cart like I just did. And they may even add more than one. Okay, that looks good. I may add that to cart as well. So what's happened here? Essentially the customer has ended up purchasing things that they didn't originally intend on purchasing when they came to your website. Now, why do you think Amazon does this? Why do you think eBay does this? It is because customers end up paying more on every transaction. A lot of customers make purchases or decisions right on the spot. When they don't intend on purchasing something, but you tempt them with another product, they will get tempted and they will end up purchasing. So I do urge you, go in and set up your upselling and cross-selling for any one of your products that you see is a good option for doing that. And like I said, cross-selling is great if products complement each other. And upselling is great if you can offer a product that is perhaps more luxurious, more expensive, and can make you more profit per sale. So please, I do urge you to take a look at these settings. Finally, the grouping. Now, say for example, uh, your products come in sets. So I'll stick to the same example. Say this um, this bedroom set. Say the bed frame, the mattress, the headboard, and a few side tables. They co all come as a set, and this full bed set wasn't available. What you can actually do is group items together. And so similarly, um, you can just go in and search for your products, and you'll be able to group them together. Okay, now I'll take you through setting up some of the shipping methods. So now back into your WordPress dashboard. If you hover over WooCommerce and go to Settings, then to the Shipping tab. Okay, firstly, just make sure these basic settings are configured the way you want. So, Shipping Calculations, Enable Shipping, yep. Currently, the shipping calculator is enabled on the cart page. I'll show you what that is. Just over here, calculate shipping. But I like to remove that. Display shipping methods with radio buttons. Yep, you'll see what that does in a second. And shipping destination default to the billing address. And that is the default. That's common practice, so I will leave that as is. Now here in this drop down you can choose to ship to all the countries you sell to or you can ship to specific countries only. So say I do that, I can choose to ship only to the United States. Alternatively I can ship to all the countries I sell to and as a reminder that setting is just in the general tab. So this is your base location and this is your selling location. So you can ship to all of these countries. And, and if you've got this configured, 
this will make more sense. So if you've got this configured to say, for example, USA, UK, and Australia, then when it, when you select ship to all countries you sell to, that will just be the countries you select in this area here. Once you're happy with that, go down to the shipping methods. Now, you'll see that some shipping methods are enabled and some are disabled. So at the moment, we have the flat rate shipping method enabled. The first thing you need to do, if you want a flat shipping rate, just click on that. Then click on this checkbox to enable or disable the flat rate shipping. Then click Save Changes. Now you can change the title if you like. You can select Availability, Specific Countries or All Allowed Countries. And you can make the shipping taxable or not taxable. Finally, enter a flat rate cost for your shipping. So say for example, it's $10 and save changes. Now if I go back into my cart and refresh this page, you'll see the changes that take effect. There we go. Uh, the flat rate is $10. That's now available for your customers. Now going back into shipping options, you'll see that there are other methods available. So free shipping, I will show you how to set that up in a few minutes. You can have a different flat rate for international delivery. You can have local delivery if you deliver to your customers. And you can have local pickup if your customers are able to come to your store and pick up your products. Obviously, that's another very popular one. So I'll show you how to set that up quickly as well. So once again, let's enable local pickup. You can change the title if you want. You can have allowed postcodes if you want. I would suggest leaving it open because it's really up to your customers if they want to come and pick it up or not. Um, and now method availability, all countries or specific countries. When you're ready, click on save changes. Now if I refresh my cart, you should see two available, a flat rate or local pickup which are our radio buttons to select shipping. And that's the setting that we selected over here, display shipping methods with radio buttons. Alternatively, you can have them as a drop down, which would look something like this. So there you go, that's how to set up your shipping options. Obviously, choose the options or shipping methods that make sense for your e-commerce store. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. Now I'll demonstrate to you how you can set up coupons on your e-commerce site. A great way to add promotional tactics to your e-com store actually. So back into WooCommerce, click on coupons. And then click add coupon. Now give your coupon a name. So let's call this one, say for example, 25 of sofas. You can give it a description if you want. Now the discount type, you can choose to have it as a percentage discount of uh, your shopping cart or a dollar value. So if I did this cart discount and I entered coupon amount 15, that would be $15 of the total cart, shopping cart value. However, if I did percentage discount, that would be 15% of your total cart value. So this coupon, I'm making a 25 off so far. Let's make that 25%. So I'll leave that cart percent value. And if in doubt, you can just hover over the little tool tips anytime you need to. Um, here, this checkbox is for allowing free shipping and I will cover that a little bit later. In this field here, you can select an expiry date for the coupon if you wish. And WooCommerce will automatically expire the coupon after that date. So it's a really good way to automate your promotions. Now in usage restriction, you can have a minimum spend and a maximum spend. You can check this checkbox if you want to, um, if you don't want this coupon to be available in conjunction with other coupons. So say for example, there is a 
10% store-wide discount and you're also running 25% off sofas. You don't want people to get 25% off sofas and the 10% store-wide. It should only be one of the two offers. So check this box if the coupon cannot be used in conjunction with other coupons. And yep, I tend to do that for my e-commerce websites. Here you can exclude sale items. So some people may, some businesses may only allow a discount on full price items and not on sale items. So you can use this checkbox to configure that. Now you can apply this discount to particular products or you can exclude certain products, which is really, really handy. Similarly, you can apply this to product categories or exclude particular product categories. So now let me just make sure that I have a category for sofas on my e-com store. So I'll just go back into my site and product sofas. Yep, I've got a sofas category. So now this discount will only be applied to products within this category. Obviously, I only have one product set up at the moment, but say you had five or ten within this one particular category. Only products in those category, in that category, will have this discount applied if you choose that particular category. So I'm going to choose sofas. Um, email restrictions. We'll cover that a bit later in another tutorial. Usage limits. Okay, you can limit this coupon to a maximum number of users. So say you want this limited to the first 50 customers only. You can do that. Or you can limit it per user. So say it's only or say each user is only allowed to use this coupon once. You can limit that per user. Or you can leave it unlimited. It's absolutely up to you. So now I'm going to go ahead and publish this coupon. There we go. Now if I go back to my site and I refresh the page. Add to cart, the leather sofa. Now I'll just remove everything else. Okay, so at the moment the sale price is 2200 and let's apply the coupon. So 25 off sofas. Coupon applied successfully. There we go. The coupon has been applied. The customer will receive this discount. And here is the final total. And they will be able to proceed to the checkout and pay for their product. So there you go. There is a perfect demonstration of how to set up a coupon. Now say you wanted to set up a site-wide discount, which is very popular. The way you would do that is just click add a coupon. And say you wanted to have a 10% store-wide discount. So give your coupon a name. Um, we can have that as a percentage discount. The coupon amount is 10%. Usage restrictions. Now you can, of course, set minimum and maximum spends if you like, individual use only, and say it only applies to full price items, so I'll click that. Now if I want a site-wide discount, I would not enter anything in these fields here, I would leave that blank. However, there may be certain products that you want to exclude, such as if you have a gift card on your site, you don't want people getting a discount of gift cards because that's just like giving away free cash. So. You can exclude certain products if you need to. Um, when you're ready, click Publish. Of course, I've selected on uh, to exclude sale prices or sale products. So now if I go to my site and I go to any product and say I add this dining chair to cart and I'll view my cart now, I will remove this previous coupon that I entered. Okay. So now if I enter this coupon code, 10% off. It says here this coupon is not valid for sale items because both the items in the cart are sale items. It will only apply to full price items. 
So there you go. If you have any questions about coupons and setting up a coupon to run a promotion for your e-commerce store, please do let me know and I'll be happy to answer. Now I'll demonstrate how you can configure a free shipping promotion. You may have seen on many e-commerce websites that they have promotions such as spend $50 or more and you will receive free shipping, something along those lines. So I can do this via the coupons section. So if I go back to coupons and add a new coupon, you'll see there's a box here to allow free shipping. So I'll check that box. Okay. Um, there's a link here to that takes you to the shipping methods, in, in particular the free shipping method. And the reason I'll bring this up right now is because there's a couple of different ways to do this. So first thing you need to do is enable free shipping. Okay. Um, now there's a number of different ways you can do this. You can have, for example, free shipping for customers who spend more than $50 on your store. And they do not require a coupon to do that. It's just automatic. Hey, if you spend more than $50, you'll get free shipping. That would be this selection over here. Here, just here. Just a minimum order amount. They do not require a coupon. Okay, and then you'd enter a minimum order amount in there. And then you would save your changes. And that would enable any customer to receive free shipping as long as the value of their cart, their shopping cart, is more than $50. It has nothing to do with coupons. However, you can also configure it such that people can get free shipping with a coupon. Or you can have a minimum account or a coupon or a minimum account and a coupon. So say this scenario would be great for people who um, have a free shipping coupon regardless of their spend. Okay. And this scenario would be great for people who need a minimum order amount as well as a coupon. So say I wanted to run a promotion, spend $50 and enter in a coupon and you will receive free shipping. So that's what I will set up. Enter a minimum order and a coupon. So I'll save that. Now the coupon code, I'll call it 50 free ship. Of course, same as before, you can actually restrict the usage if you need to. Now in this case, we do not, do not need to set a minimum or a maximum. All we need to do is set up that coupon, check this box, and the free shipping method will be enabled because we set that up in the other, in the other tab right here. So now I'll save all of that and publish. Now I will go to my store and choose a product. Let's say this one here. Okay. So now shipping, flat rate 10, or local pickup. Now if I apply that coupon, add it successfully, there we go, the free shipping coupon is now available. And I can now progress, select that, and the user can progress to the checkout. However, if the customer adds product that is under $50, they will not see or be able to use this coupon code. So they'll, they'll be able to enter this coupon code, but it will not be added successfully and they will not get the option of free shipping. Of course, that's because we set it up that way over here. So please, I do encourage you to use free shipping on your e-com stores because it's a great promotion to have to get customers to spend a little bit more and trigger that free shipping. They will always add that extra product in card just so they can get things shipped to them for free. So use that strategically in the best way that you can. If you have any questions or would like my suggestion, please get in touch with me via the comments below. And that is how to make an e-commerce website using the storefront WordPress theme. As you can see, it looks absolutely sensational on a mobile device. It adjusts automatically to the mobile screen size. And this is absolutely automatic. You don't have to do anything. 
please leave me a big thumbs up on this YouTube video and subscribe to my channel for more awesome stuff in the future. If you have any questions, I would love to help you out. So please leave your question in the comments below and I'll be sure to help you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching and see you next time.